Alright guys, so I've been playing a ton of Apex Legends, as I'm sure most people have right now. Uh, I wanted to make this video earlier, but I wanted to put a ton of time into the game first, and really understand what all these settings are before I made this video. Um, if you alter these settings and change them in the way that I'm going to show you in this video, some of them are personal preference, but others will definitely make you a better player, whether it be through gameplay, like actual playing the game, or just visually, it'll make it feel better, it'll look better, you know what I mean? So, without further ado, we're going to get right into it. So when you click the settings menu, this is what you see. You've got four tabs on the top, gameplay, controller, video, audio. We're not going to touch on audio because, I mean, as personal preference, I turn down the music volume. You do what you want to do with that. We're going to talk about the main ones under the gameplay setting, the uh, controller setting, as well as the video setting. Now, mind you, a lot of these are personal preference, so you alter it how you want to alter it, but I'm going to give you my preferences, and I'm going to tell you a couple things that you should change regardless of personal preference, just because it will be better. So for starters, the main one's obviously sensitivity, completely personal preference, whatever you feel comfortable with, but then you've also got the response curve. Now I can make an entire video talking about response curve. If you come from Overwatch, then you know what it's like to have a ridiculous amount of different aim settings. That's what all this is. So we can go into detail about all of this, but I'm not going to waste your time, and I really do not want to go into detail about all of it because it is very complicated. So, play Classic, that's what I do if you play Call of Duty, if you play t other Titanfalls, basically any other first person shooter, Classic is the way to go, it is the normal for any other game ever. If you come from Overwatch, steady aim is dual zone. You'll know what that means. Linear is linear ramp. So, if you want to rock with it, rock with it, but that's the response curve, okay? Next, I want to briefly touch on Dead Zones because this one might affect a lot of you guys. So if you have a really old controller, and let's say your controller is just sitting on your desk, right? And your, your crosshairs are moving a tiny little bit. If it's doing that, put the Dead Zone to large. Or if your character's just slowly walking and you're not touching your controller, put it to large. The larger your Dead Zone, the less sway you're going to have when you're moving. Default is small, so if you're not having that problem, keep it on small. But if you're having that little sway problem where you're not touching your controller and your character's moving or your crosshairs are moving put it on large and the problem will go away all right guys now this is one of the most important ones this was a game changer for me so under the video tab you're going to see a setting called field of view now it's just as it sounds field of view is what you see in game so the lower your field of view the less you see the higher it is the more you see all the gameplay that i have recorded up until this point has been on default setting which is 70. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. Here's the difference. I'm standing in between those two barricades or targets. Now I'm going to increase the field of view and I can see way more. Way more. So everything that I've recorded up until this point has been at the default setting of 70. Now when I switched it to the max setting, I, it took a little bit of getting used to. But let me tell you, it improved my gameplay immensely. Like tenfold. It, it's incredible how much more you can get done. You see way more. The only thing that I have to say that you, you'll take a little bit in getting used to, okay? The thing that you got to get used to the most is distances. Because when your field of view is wider, your distances feel farther away. So you, you might think that you're out of range to somebody with a peacekeeper, which is the shotgun. But in reality, they're a lot closer than you think, and then they bop you, and you're dead. So... The only thing that you kind of got to get used to is dis distancing. I don't know why I keep messing that up. Distancing, you got to get used to that. But other than that, I highly recommend it. Get used to it. You should definitely play on that. Now, one of the most important settings, in my opinion, is the damage numbers. By default, it is set to stacking. Now, you're going to want to change that to floating. But I'm going to show you what stacking looks like first, just so you can see. So when you shoot a target, this is just in the training arena, you can see that every single time I hit, it does 20 damage and it stacks up. So a full clip, the 700. Now when I have it on floating, which is what we have here, you can see that it's doing 20 damage on each shot. Now why this might be a problem to some people, like it was for me at the beginning, I would hit somebody, we'll say three times, and it would do 20 three times. It would say I did 20 then 40 then 60 so in my head i'm like oh i did 20 damage then 40 damage then 60 damage and i would tell my teammates hey yo he's one shot i hit him for 120 messing up a call out like that is kind of important in in this game right so like 
If he's not actually one shot and you're telling everybody he's one shot and you only did 60 damage, yeah, I mean, you're not doing your part, you know? Whereas, if you have it on floating, at least you know exactly what you're doing. You can do the math yourself, you can figure it out. I highly recommend it. Switch it to floating if you haven't already. That's the next one. Besides the field of view, that's another important one. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is the interact prompt style. I recommend it to be on default if you're not familiar with the game, but you can also switch it to compact. Now, obviously, when you have it on default, this is what it looks like when you're going to pick up a weapon, ammo, whatever you're going to pick up in the game, right? If you switch it to compact, this is what you see. It is a lot smaller. It makes the UI look way better but there isn't as much details into what you're picking up. So if you're not familiar with the game yet, then I highly recommend keeping it on default, but as you progress and as you start knowing what weapons are what, what you're looking for, uh, I, I highly recommend switching it to compact. I play with it on compact now, but obviously I've been playing the game quite a bit, so I know what I'm looking for, I know what the items look like on the ground before even picking them up, so I don't have to worry about it. So, those are the settings that I use. Feel free to use them. Uh, my sensitivity is a little bit high. Probably going to turn it down a little bit, to be honest with you. But I hope it helped. I hope you learned a little something. Those are the most important. Obviously, there's a little bit more in there. But I don't think that uh, there's much I can give on them. It's more personal preference. Those are, that's the most important stuff. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys on the next video.